Welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me, where today I am talking some more about Boogie Pop Phantom, the somewhat difficult to understand and unpack anime series. Go and look at some of my other videos if you're confused about the plot. I have other videos about that. This video is focusing on one of the main themes of Boogie Pop Phantom, uh, which are really two interrelated themes, themes of change and escapism. Boogie Pop focuses on characters who have had things happen to them that have changed. In some cases, this is direct and supernatural. They suddenly have superpowers, essentially. Although it's not fun superpowers, usually. In other cases, they've just had trauma, they've had unfortunate events in their past that they are trying to deal with. Or in some cases, trying not to deal with. And the series then analyzes and shows you the effects of how they try to deal with those things that happen to them. And in many cases, in the cases of many characters, their solution to that is escapism. A good example of that is an episode later on in the series dealing with a girl uh, named Panaru. And we see that girl, and we see what's going on with her. Um, the clips we'll see here is from an earlier episode dealing with um, uh, this very same topic, actually. And I'll talk about that first, where we have this, this girl who, whose best friend has matured more quickly in a lot of ways than she has. And she doesn't quite know how to deal with that. She, as a result, has started locking herself away and has become a, a germaphobe, actually. One of the first things you see in this episode, um, after you see all the stuff with the Column of Light event, and again, see some of my other episodes to uh, understand what's going on there, but she's always washing her hands. And you realize she's, she's scared of contamination, and contamination is really her theme, that she doesn't want to be contaminated by life. And as a result, she's shut off. She has no, really no friends. Um, she has no boyfriend anymore, or ever. She never had a boyfriend. Uh, she only has one friend who they're now kind of distant and weird because she shut herself off from things. Later on, we meet this, this story about Ponaru. And I won't spoil the, the, the whole explanation of Panaru because that is very much woven into that story and understanding who Panaru is. But the main character has decided that the way to not feel pain is by staying disconnected from life, by ra rising yourself above, ra you know, lifting yourself above everything, and just realizing that everything's impermanent, Nothing, nothing matters in a cosmic sense, and so just, you're above everything. Nothing will touch you. And then you find out what impact that has had on her life, and on her personality, and on her, her relationships, and on her ability to just um, deal with things. One of the great things about Boogie Pop Phantom is that it comes down very firmly on the line against escapism. For a show that is very complex and that has a lot of characters dealing with a lot of things, it is very clear that their point here is that escapism, while sometimes necessary because you're just too traumatized to deal with something, obviously you can't you know, completely process everything in totality at every given second, Beyond a very short point, or a very short time, you need to deal with things. You need to live in reality. You can't hold yourself away from something. Sir Christopher in the chat room is saying, the root of suffering is attachment. And that is very much something that this deals with a lot. This, this idea, uh, this, this very Buddhist principle, that you, know, you must not be attached to things. And it's one of the things that people often get wrong about B Buddhism, this idea that attachment means any emotional feeling about anything is attachment. And that's really not what's usually meant. Attachment means my identity is wrapped up in this. 
You know, um, it means I'm attached to it. It is part of me. I have made it part of me. You know, that's bad. But liking something, enjoying something, appreciating something, loving something is a wonderful thing. You know, it doesn't make it part of you. And so many people, people get, get confused with lots of, uh, lots of times. Well outside of Buddhism. <laughs> and so you see this over and over in Boogie Pop Phantom, is people deciding to either become over-attached to something, as in the case of the character partway through, who plays visual novels all the time, and is very attached to a particular character, a very young female character, um, who he sort of brings into real life, and he starts acting out his fantasies in real life. And you see how he has a very unfortunate end as a result of that. Um, you know, fantasy is not reality. And fantasy can teach us about reality, but it's not the same, very importantly. So you see this over and over in Boogie Pop Phantom. You see this also in how the characters are um, in the fates of the various characters. One of the points of the show is where each character ends up by the end of their episode or the end of the series. Are they alive or are they dead, basically? The ones who have locked on to a certain thing, have, have locked on to an attachment, usually have not fared well. While the ones who um, I'm, I'm sorry, um, I, I got that backwards. The ones who have not dealt with that attachment, the, one, the ones who, who are either you know, above everything or, are, or who are over-attached to things, they're the ones that usually aren't around anymore in one way or the other. It's those who actually deal with their reality, deal with their problems as best they can, that usually find a, a way through. Um, and Nokuto Sai is asking in the chat room, do, do those spiders that one guy eats tie into this? Absolutely. Um, he sees these spiders that are, that appear to be the, the root problem on people, uh, that people have, something they're attached to. Uh, turns out they're actually, spoiler alert, and if you're watching an analysis of Bully Pop Phantom, I'm assuming you've watched the series. Um, so he sees these spiders, and once he eats these spiders, this big problem they've been having, this, this, this stress they've been having melts away, because it turns out those are their memories of that stress. They are the memories of the problems they had. And if you don't remember them, they're not there anymore. But then they don't remember anything about that thing anymore. So if they're stressed about a relationship, that relationship's gone. You know? Um, and that's horrible! And you see how horrible that is, and, and kind of what, what happens as a result of those things. So definitely, you don't want to, um, you know, you, you don't want to do that. And I mean, the, the main character is actually horrified by the results of his powers as a result of that, and what he's actually done in life. But importantly, and it's, it's why you see how these, how, how the series deals with these these issues. He, tr his immediate reaction is, I didn't know, I couldn't have known. It's not my fault. He immediately distances himself, tries to escape it, right? And that's not a good reaction either. You have to take responsibility for your actions. So th that is a theme that's repeated over and over in Boogie Pop Phantom. Um, dealing with the reality of your situation and, and working through that. And yeah, it, it, in a real way, the, the guy eating spiders is an embodiment of the problem with escapism. Of he, he lets people escape but in a very unproductive way, if you will. So, hope this is helpful. I've got more videos coming. You should see more videos, if you're watching this, about Bully Pop Phantom and other themes it goes into, and how those relate to the overall um, um, uh, weaving of the story in Bully Pop Phantom. Again, hope it's helpful. See you in those videos, too.